5G, I have seven minutes. Um, you can do anything you want. You'll be able to talk to anybody you want. You'll be able to have your one device talk to your other device. There are amazing conversations about the, the value of having next generation devices. Um, we started with 1G, obviously, we went to 5G. This is now, and by the way, we are demanding that as users. And so this is a next step to try to deal with that demand, and there's some questions we all have about it. But you have to ask the right questions, and that's what I hope to do. 5G is, is small cell towers like that. It's millimeter waves in certain parts of the network. It's beam forming in networks, and full do, but it goes back and forth. You'll be able to send as much out as you get. It's massive MIMO, multiple in, multiple out. So there's technologies behind all of this that is enabling us to have the benefits of 5G. And so you'll be able to walk on the road, that will be able to connect to your refrigerator when you ask where's the milk. Very important to know about this, and this is where it is sort of, you need to pay attention to because on the far left side we have 3G, 4G, roughly nine meg to six, about six gigahertz. All those networks still exist over the foreseeable future, the next 10 years, most likely. Um, then you have low frequency stuff. Basically, they call it uh, six gig sub, uh, sub network and below. Your TV with the antennas were 600 uh, um, uh, megahertz. It always existed, but the FCC now has allocated availability of that. And when you hear about Sprint, it's somewhere between 700 megs and 900. That's how they're giving you the service. It's not the millimeter stuff they're giving you. They're giving you stuff that existed for years and years and years. But it's separate from already a pre-existing network. Then you go, and there are other emissions at different levels that are up into the 10 gigahertz space. When you hear 5G is going to kill me, it's about the far right. It's the millimeter, 26 to 60 gigahertz. We can go up to 300 gigahertz, by the way, based on the FCC standard. But it's the stuff that's at the far right that is where the debates are, for the reasons I said. Okay, MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, and beaming. What this is, is 5G at the MIMO level, at the, uh, the uh, far end of the spectrum, at the small cell, is focused signals. They're omnidirectional, by the way, but there are two signals being sent. See the two red little beeper things? Those are, are uh, um, antenna phase array uh, transmissions. They actually can adjust. And when they adjust, they focus that power. See where they transition? They connect to each other. And they, you see that beam that comes out? That's controlling beam. That's MIMO. Remember the elephant I talked about? With 4G, they used one jackhammer. This is two. They're focusing it in, and I created this image just so you can see that that now focused beam is gonna go to your, your head right through others, potentially. So we know that there's a high concentration of power that's never existed at a, at a level of transmission that has never existed, and it's targeted specifically to your head. This is the concerns of 5G. Not all that other stuff. So let's talk a little bit about that. Notice on the bottom right, excuse me, left, see those little cell towers? That's why, that's because they can't go more than 850 feet. They have to be right in front of your house 
to be able to serve the back of your house, 850 feet at 23 gigahertz. That's a long way to go. And what's really somewhat interesting that no one realizes is that's at 20 watts. Remember the cell phone is 1.6 watts? This is transmitting at 20 watts. A cell phone far out there, it's 60 watts. So it's a third of a transmission that's serving thousands and thousands of customers right at your front door at 20 watts. So all of a sudden, we're going to have a whole lot of stuff hitting our, our bodies like never before and with beams focused to that. Bees. Those bees, by the way, are bees that were at a 5G site and they died. We know 20 gigahertz through research, 20 gigahertz is absorbed five times more than 4G in a bee. If you went to a trial, uh, if you looked at some study up to 4G and you put a transmitter inside a beehive, they wouldn't come back. Now we're 20 times higher and five times more absorption. Well, will that do? I don't know, because this is not statistical. I can't tell you what's going to happen, but I can tell you some cases it is. I already told you about the bacteria problem. We know at 20, at 20 gigahertz, we know for sure it accelerates the bacteria, the biome of the, of, the, of the stomach, even more so than up to 4G at 2 gig. Um, and the FCC has allowed us to go up to 300 gig. 6G is starting at above 300 gig. We know from research, uh, Kylan and I wanted to, we, we, the, I went to school right here, and the, 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 they were, they were, they were, they were the protests are going on. Kylan's a, an expert in what happens to a signal when it hits your head, your body. She knows at 90 gigahertz, the spiral sweat glands of your body absorb as an antenna to your body. That's why these activation denial systems are so effective. They heat your body because it's a receptive, uh, it modulates directly at the levels of a, of a 90 gigahertz signal. So we know from some study work at some of the frequencies using that there is potentially danger to the user. And here's some examples of some of the news reports coming out in the marketplace. That, that some of the stuff we're seeing is, we already know is happening. And, um, and, and so some of the claims being made by one side of the, is, is sort of coming to fruition um, and you should know. So you need to decide if this is a problem for you. One thing's for sure, I can't control my son. I can't control my wife. I can't control my grandmother. I can't control my kids for sure. And their kids, I don't have any, because I invented technology to shield my son. I still don't have grandchildren. But you control your environment. You're the architect of your environment. You really need to think about what you can do to eliminate the bees in the room. Thank you.